So occasionally you have to go outside of your comfort zone and try something new and different. I happened to see these in the grocery store in the seafood section. So I bought two packs and I figured I'd give it a shot. So I found a Cajun recipe and I've made a couple of minor adjustments. But there you can see the list of ingredients. So two eggs, garlic powder, oregano, thyme, black pepper, salt, onion powder, paprika, chili powder, a cooking oil. I use sunflower oil because it's very neutral. A quarter cup of milk, uh, two teaspoons of plain yogurt, some people use buttermilk, and one lemon. You will also need about a half a cup to three quarters of a cup of flour for the breading process. And here's the two packages I bought, which are 300 grams each, so a total of 600 grams, so it's about 1.3 pounds. So you don't get a lot, the yield is not a lot, in, uh, it's more the, the flavor that you're looking for. So there you can see them laid out. So there's five in each package and then you're going to cut them in half so i'll go through that process uh, right now so you'll want to lay them out like this and give your knife a good tap these bones are not very thick so you don't really need a cleaver i think that would be a bit of overkill but uh, i take off the top little section there of each leg and uh, i discard them i don't use that because i guess there's bones in there but they are edible apparently but uh, so these came fully cleaned uh, i did wash them uh, I mean cleaning as in uh, as a fish would be cleaned. So you're really only getting the legs and, a, and just a little bit above the legs. So you're just basically cleaning them up in terms of cutting and trimming. These were also frozen when I bought them. So I thawed them for about a day, I believe. So you want to make sure they're fully thawed before you go through all this and uh, and either fry them or bake them but now there's lots of recipes online but I did find this Cajun one that uh, I'm interested I've used that kind of same recipe before for chicken wings and uh, it's pretty dependable so that's what I went for with this and it turned out really good I was happy with the flavor and the flavor let's talk about that so you think you know what do frog legs taste like so everyone has their different opinion but to me it's kind of a cross between chicken and something like shrimp it has a slight fishy taste but generally if it's very close to chicken it's uh, very juicy and tender uh, there isn't a lot to eat uh, there's not a like i said a big yield but uh kind of a you know it, between shrimp and and chicken so i guess you get the best of both worlds but uh, it's a bit of bit of work to do but not too much these were uh, i think 4.99 per pack so basically ten dollars worth of meat uh, you get a fair amount of protein and it's a nice change from you know the, the daily chicken or beef or pork so it, i figured i'd give it a shot and i did like the results so after you've cut them all in half uh, give them a good pat down make sure they're uh, pretty much dry for the breading process if that's important or else you end up with things not sticking properly and a little bit too soggy so give them a couple flips and a good pat down with either paper towel or a regular towel and in the meantime, on the stove, I have a large frying pan, cast iron that's been heating up. And I'm going to add about a half inch of uh, cooking oil, whatever you choose. Try to pick an oil that has a, a neutral flavor. So this is sunflower oil. And you want to slowly increase your heat, uh, maybe on medium or medium low. In the meantime, you're going to prepare your breading. So there we have our half cup of flour in the left side and we're going to have our two large eggs on the right hand side. You can use bowls. I have these uh, trays that I reuse all the time. So we're just going to whisk our two eggs together. And we're going to add our quarter cup of milk. Give that a good uh, whisk, and then we're going to add a bit of our uh, plain yogurt. So this adds a little bit of depth of flavor. It gives it a, uh, a slight sour taste, but uh, not much. So you could leave it out. Some people will use buttermilk, or they'll even soak their uh, frog's legs in, in milk overnight, or whatever period they do that for. But uh, this recipe does use yogurt or buttermilk, so... That's what I had on hand, and it did give a good result. 
So yeah, you want to give that a good, uh, good mix. Spread out your flour a bit. I didn't bother sifting it. It didn't really make a difference in my mind. So here we're going to add all our dry ingredients. So our salt and our garlic powder. And this is uh, some onion powder, homemade onion powder. Of course, it's sticking to the bottom a bit. And I use chili powder. The other recipe I looked at used cayenne, but I thought uh, a little bit too hot for our taste. So chili powder, paprika, and then you're going to add oregano and uh, thyme. And I went easy on the thyme because thyme can be a strong flavor. And then black pepper at the very end, which again, uh, that's really to your taste. I only added about an eighth of a teaspoon, but you can certainly add more pepper. Okay, so just give that a, a good stir to combine. So this is for basically 20 pieces. So you've you've had, uh, there was 10 frogs and I cut them in half. So you can always buy more packages and upscale your ingredients as well. So I'm grabbing a spoon here and I'm taking about a half a tablespoon and I'm gonna add it to my egg mixture. And then the remainder I'm going to put in the flour tray. And then we're going to move those forward. Okay, so you're flavoring both your flour and your egg mixture. Apparently frog legs are uh, high in protein, low in fat. Um, very similar to chicken. They are considered a seafood. So similar to, you know, like alligator or, or whatever exotic uh, seafood, but uh, other parts of the world, it's not very popular in North America other than I would say the, you know, Southern US, but uh, definitely not as popular in Canada. That's why I wanted to give it a try. I saw them and I was kind of surprised to see them, to be honest with you. But yeah, they're very popular in other parts of the world and and they are, uh, they are farm raised to these ones, uh, aquaculture, so um, I didn't have to, you know, clean them or, or or gut them or anything like that. They were pretty much already cleaned and prepared and frozen. So that's why I went ahead and uh, gave it a shot. So it's not within everyone's comfort level, but uh, I was surprised how close to chicken they, they taste. So uh, give it a shot. So you really want to mix this well, get it all pre-mixed and ready. In the meantime, your frying pan is heating up uh, slowly on the stove. So it's very similar to doing uh, breading chicken wings, um, just kind of a mini version. So just imagine you have a little mini chicken wings and uh, they're pretty delicate. They don't break on you, but they are kind of floppy. And uh, so you have to kind of take your time with them. So you want to coat them lightly in flour, shake off the flour and place them in your egg mixture. Then back into the flour again. Give them a good roll. So yeah, flour, egg wash, and then back in the flour and then into a separate bowl. No breadcrumbs involved this time, just flour and egg wash and all your spices. I also found with the half a cup of flour, I just barely had enough to do these 20 pieces. So you could add maybe you know, slightly more than a half a cup, like three quarters of a cup. Um, it really depends on the size of the pieces. That, you know, if, if the legs are quite large, then you're going to add a little bit more flour. But uh, I had enough. It worked out okay. And this is a good spice mixture. It's not too, um, like again, it's Southern US kind of Cajun style. You could certainly look for different recipes, but uh, the point was to try the, the actual frog legs and see what the taste was like. So again, very, to me, very similar to chicken and my wife agreed. It was uh, not, uh, nothing where you suddenly bite into it and you're thinking, wow, that's really different than uh, anything I've ever tasted before. So um, yeah, I would probably make these again. It's a bit of work, but um, you know, for a, 
not much meat, but um, it's enjoyable to try something new once in a while, right? So in the meantime, on the stove, your oil is heating up. Uh, you'll want to have uh, a large strainer with some paper towel uh, for when you're moving your chicken to the uh, to be drained in a strainer, so you can get that uh, ready in advance. Here I'm just showing you a close-up of the breading process. Gets to be a little bit messy, but uh, you could use the two-hand method, but uh, I figured these were small and didn't take much time, so I just used one hand. Washed my fingers once in a while just because they were getting coated. And here I'm checking the oil temperature. I, it was actually over 400, so I had to wait a while till it uh, kind of calmed down, down to about 350, 360. But give or take uh, 10 degrees, but you definitely want to make sure these are cooked through properly. So what you want to do is for one side, you want to make sure that you cook them for a, a good two minutes. And then another minute and a half to two minutes on the other side. So it really depends, uh, of course, on the size of your legs. But this ensures that it's cooked through properly. So they say three to five minutes in total, depending on the size of your legs. So I did a full two minutes and then another minute and a half to two minutes on the other side. And that act ended up being perfect for these, uh, these particular wing, uh, wings, legs. They do look like wings. And you're looking for a nice golden brown color. It's important to use an oil that doesn't impart a lot of flavor, like, you know, uh, not sesame oil or uh, a strong olive oil or anything like that. So, you know, a peanut oil, corn oil, vegetable oil. But I like sunflower because it's pretty neutral. Canola oil would work okay as well. Towards the end, I just lay, I lay them in by hand. Um, just be careful that you're not splattering. Lay them in gently. And because they're so small, they don't take very long to cook. So this whole process uh, of the frying only took about maybe 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Of course, I always try to make as much mess as possible, but it wasn't too bad this time. But there you can see the strainer with the paper towel. And I'm constantly checking my temperature to make sure I'm on uh, around the 350 degree Fahrenheit mark. I don't want to burn them and I don't want to undercook them. So here's, I just cut one open as, a, as an example of what it looks like inside. They were very juicy and nice and tender. And it's hard to tell the difference between chicken and this. It's uh, very, very similar. And you could serve with uh, with lemon and give a, a few squirts of lemon on top. I'm sure there's uh, some dips that you could uh, uh, would be appropriate for these as well. So there you go. That's what they look like. I thought I'd give it a try and I was happy with the results. So something a little bit different. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned and please subscribe for more videos. Bye for now.